What is up YouTube? I'm Devon Da Vinci, leader of the Renaissance Crew, and you're watching Da Vinci Reacts. Today I'm going to be getting into another video by Outside Xbox. Um, they do a ton of very unique lists for video games. They don't do the generic stuff like top 10 RPGs or top 10 Mario games. or top, like They do very unique stuff. And one of the examples that I will pull out is a video I'm about to react to right now, which is seven times realism was too far... Uh, it says commenter edition, so I'm guessing this is a video where they dedicate it towards the comments that they get as opposed to just a arbitrary list that they've made themselves. Um, I did react to another video they did. I forgot the name of the title of it, but I will leave a card in this video that you can go ahead and check out. Um, and you can look and see what it was because as of right now, it's I, I forgot about what it was. But um like I said, they do make a lot of great lists. And if you want to go to their channel and look at the, what they have to offer, you can go to the end of this video, the last 30 seconds, click on it, and it'll take you directly to their channel where you can like, subscribe, and watch more videos as well. And the original link for this video is in the description box down below. So if you don't want to hear me interrupting or talking over it, just click that and watch it. Anyway, let's get into this. Realism in games is all well and good, right up until someone dies of dysentery. That was the thesis of one of our recent videos, and a lot of you concurred, submitting your own experiences in video games in which your greatest enemy wasn't dragons or zombies, but cold, hard realism. Here are your suggestions for the times you could have used a little less reality. Enjoy, and watch out for spoilers ahead for the following games, and also dysentery. Boil your water, people. I didn't really grow up too much with Oregon Trail, so the whole dysentery joke jokes don't really get to me too much. Or it's not a reference I can attach myself to very easily. Our story begins in the middle of last Bodily Tuesday, functions, where a hopeless Samuel. young freeloader called Sam is sipping a fancy cup of coffee with a name nobody can pronounce. In most video games, you take control of another person. That being said, it's usually just stuff like walking or shooting or opening doors you're in charge of, unless they're really drunk. Sure hope he finds Lenny soon. Mission. Not so in the game Manual Samuel, which really means it when it asks you to take control of main character Samuel, as commenter Page well, I think Stubbs I've seen points someone out. Playing this. Literally the majority of Manual Samuel. Was it game you have to A, control Samuel's breathing, B, move individual limbs, C, complete simple tasks. It was tasks. either Game Grumps or In Markiplier, Manual Samuel, you play as the eponymous this. Sam, a spoiled rich kid who is killed by a truck and goes to hell, where he is offered a deal by the Grim Reaper. You'll have to survive 24 hours with a handicap I choose under my supervision, bro. Well, sure, Death. What's it gonna be? I can't tell a lie. I must only do good deeds. I must go around making amends to everyone I've wronged. Aye, right, so. This here be the dealing biz. All your body functions be manual, so you kind of have to do stuff on purpose. Oh, oh well, that went in a different direction to yeah, what I like was expecting. Like you have to make yourself breathe. You see, the human you body is a clever thing and does a lot of its basic functions automatically, like breathing at different rates depending on your oxygen needs and automatically blinking about 15 times per minute without you even noticing. Although now that I've mentioned it, I am noticing and oh god, I'm gonna have to manually blink for the next 10 minutes, thanks a lot me. <laughs> so in one sense, it's not super realistic that you have to do all this stuff manually. What is realistic is how much of a gigantic hassle it would be trying to keep track of your breathing and blinking while at the same time trying to keep your spine straight and your legs moving independently of each other. <laughs> you be getting late for work. Sam does something that resembles walking toward the bathroom. Gonna do a kickflip now. You forgot to breathe. And that's not to mention the difficulty of doing simple tasks like peeing. Sam tries to take a leak. Oh, Walking boy. downstairs. Sam walks down the stairs with... Sam decides to hurl himself down the stairs. Or making breakfast without flinging boiling hot coffee in your own eyes. <gasps> Sam hurls coffee into his eyes for reasons unknown. Mm. To be fair, I struggle with that some mornings. Blink. Oh, God, I'm still doing it. Blink. Can we move on to the next thing? I've got some stuff to do with here. Mm. Blink. Malaria. <laughs> so you gotta watch out for mosquitoes in this game. The first is on just a vessel for preserving dinosaur First Far Cry DNA game I played was primal, so I don't know. They also have about downsides, like when they bite you and give you an unpleasant disease. 
This element of epidemiological realism was embraced by Far Cry 2, which really cranked up the realism over the original game, usually in ways that would inconveniently kill you, like the weapons that would jam realistically. Realistic map holding. Oh boy. And realistic catastrophic weapon failures. What the fuck are you doing? Run! <laughs> it's not that realistic. I've died way more times in Far Cry 2 than I have in real life. Commenter Error recognizes that there's one realistic feature above all in Far Cry 2 that is a serious pain in the circulatory system. What about Far Cry 2? You had a pretty mixed bag of realism with map holding and navigation, weapon jams and failures, and malaria. Just malaria. Yes, within minutes of stepping off the plane into the Central African nation in which Far Cry 2 is set, you're immediately bitten by a mosquito and contract serious disease malaria, which suggests you're extremely unlucky. Either that, or some prankster swapped your insect repellent for delicious steak sauce. Having malaria is, as you might imagine, a bit of an impediment to being a mercenary. Fail to take your anti-malarials and you'll be struck with debilitating symptoms. These include headaches, weakness, and the screen going a bit yellow around the edges. Hey, are you okay? You don't look so good. You tired? Man, all this realism last words to you were out of the I'm cab. I'm surprised they made the third Far Cry <laughs> game a relaxing tropical beach holiday. Oh boy. Oh, come on. And of course, Oregon Trail has to be on here. The Oregon Trail was a historic 2,000 mile long wagon route that connected the Missouri River to Oregon. The reason that modern day Oregon is completely deserted is that every single person who attempted the trail died of dysentery. I got all the or way to the last part to of the, the boat Oregon race. Trail crashed game, trying to get onto the shore in its depiction and lost the historical everybody. dangers facing the early westward pioneers, as noted by commenters Elora and Khan, who say, how could you forget the earliest survival simulator, like, Oregon Trail? I literally beat the yes, river part. Use caution when Googling tried what to dysentery bank is. myself Looked and perfectly hit the capable wrong spot of Googling and died. medical terms without having to. Oh God! It was on image search. It was on image search. To be fair to the Oregon Trail, the real-life Oregon Trail was a treacherous journey, and many settlers did die of diseases that are easily preventable nowadays. But the Oregon Trail video game is so hyper-committed to historical realism that you can't go five feet without someone breaking their leg, contracting typhoid, breaking their other leg, and then dying of typhoid. And good luck if you want to try and cross a river. Good luck because some of you are definitely going to drown. There's realism, Oregon Trail, and then there's what's going on here, Luke which is painting a picture of a past in which everyone who tried to travel west immediately broke all their limbs, jackknifing their wagon into a river of typhoid. Still, I guess it was educational, and we all learned a lot. I myself, for example, learned to never Google image search dysentery. That's fun to do a poop. I know that. to figure a way out of this. Any second now and Stucky would be knocking Did you throw out, with uh, Outlast in this too? In the Shining. Oh, Alan Wake takes place in the town of Bright out. Falls, which, as it happens, is one of the gloomiest, spookiest places we've ever encountered. Must be one of those ironic names, like the Great Depression. In fact, light is pretty much your only defense against the horrifying enemies called the Taken who have infested the town. There's just one problem with that, as commenter the real 008 Zulu points out. Honorable mention for Alan Wake? The flashlight you used constantly had to replace its Energizer branded batteries. Yes, as the real 008 Zulu identifies, these batteries last about as long as my career as an international boxer. Just at the least opportune moment, the lights go out and you get accosted by a ghoul. Yeah, it, it, it seems like if Energizer well, referee, was going to actually sponsor. Called. Even if you don't run out of. Uh, it seemed like if Energizer was going to actually sponsor this game, you would think they would want their batteries to last a long time. <laughs> this is this isn't helping Energizer's case for you know battery life or the referee, as he insisted on being called. Even if you don't run out of power altogether, there's the extra stress of having to manually replace the batteries every 30 seconds or so during a heated firefight. This all seems like a bad advert for Energizer batteries. 
Still, That's stop exactly piling up the batteries and use your flashlight extremely sparingly, and you can feel that little bit less anxious You're about sucking. battery capacity You're sucking. when you. Touche. Oh wow. Working for money and Kingdom Hearts too. I'm debating whether I'm gonna stream Kingdom Hearts three again. I might, but I won't archive it. So if you want to catch What's me playing, what's the best part about going to Disneyland? Oh, one if, you... if you want to catch me playing Kingdom Hearts three, uh, you're gonna have to get to the live stream. What's the best part about going to Disneyland? If you answered saving up for months in order to be able to afford the exorbitant cost of going there, then boy oh boy do we have the video game for you. That game being Kingdom Hearts 2, as suggested by commenter Block Cooper, who says, How about in Kingdom Hearts 2, when, at the beginning of the game, you have to do about an hour's worth of part-time jobs, in order to get enough money to buy a train ticket, just to have it promptly stolen from you by a guy in a black trench coat. Like Disneyland, Kingdom Hearts 2 is full of elaborate themed worlds, with levels based around the Lion King, Mulan, and Pirates of the Caribbean, and lets you meet such beloved Disney characters as Jack Skellington, the genie from Aladdin, and Orlando Bloom, I guess. Those pirates kidnapped my swan and took her to their ship. Now they've sailed, and I'll never be able to find her. However, if you want to actually get to all the fun Disney stuff, you need to get through the game's prologue, in which you're required to get a series of boring part-time jobs in order to earn enough money to be able to buy a train ticket to go to the interesting part of the game. These jobs include such classic odd jobs as pushing a cart up a hill, delivering posts down a hill, and fighting bees with a stick. I didn't have a problem. Cut. Cut. <laughs> Honestly, whatever they're paying you, kid, it's not enough. Clearly, a game in which you travel between different Disney worlds with a talking duck on a magical train isn't super committed to realism, which is why it's so weird that the game decides to be painstakingly realistic in forcing you to work a bunch of menial jobs and save up so you can afford your train ticket. Why not just have Mickey Mouse show up out of nowhere and buy the ticket for you with some of his wristwatch money? What do you mean that's basically what ends up happening? Your majesty? You gotta board the train and leave town. The train knows the way. Here. So what exactly was the point of all that, Disney? Oh, I get it. You're trying to teach me that money is meaningless so that when I get to the theme parks, I'm okay with paying $6 for a churro. I'm on to you. Yeah, I just thought Teller it was part of the tutorial. Tell I want to prepare you for the real world. We want to show you what life is. No, I've heard about really this game. Like. <laughs> Desert bus. Listen to is this. The first this is funny. Line of what we like to call Vera simulators, games stupefyingly like reality. The experience of riding the bus is hit and miss at the best of times. Even if it's not late and you get a seat, you always run the risk of sitting next to someone who's watching videos without headphones. Yet imagine how much worse it could be if you were also on the desert bus of the legendary minigame Desert Bus. In that case, you'd spend eight real-time hours aboard a likely unair-conditioned bus pootling through the baking Nevada desert, and at the end of all that, you're in Las Vegas. You're just driving straight. Throw in some spiders. And if you think, oh, well, I'll go ahead and just uh, hold down the drive button and just keep going straight. Wrong. They thought about that, too. Apparently, the game constantly makes you uh, move slightly to the right so you have to constantly like tap left a little bit to try to get you back lined up again so unless you can like create some type of macro on your controller that'll keep pushing the left button you're going to be shit out of luck and you've got purgatory for jane simulator 2018 Desert Bus was part of a collection of minigames devised by celebrity stage magicians Penn and Teller which was just a kind of thing that happened in the 90s The collection was never released, but did become famous, or at least notorious, for its novelty minigames like the brutally realistic driving simulator Desert Bus, as suggested for this video by commenter Nicholas Innocent. Hmm, Desert Bus, where if you break something three hours in, you have to be towed in real time for three hours back to the start. Yep, along with realistically simulating an eight-hour journey from Tucson, Arizona to Vegas, Desert Bus was designed so its clapped-out public transport would pull to the right like a defective I didn't know about trolley. the brake part. That ass fucked up. So if you failed to constantly correct its course, this hell bus would come off the road, stall, and be towed all the way back to Tucson. Like 
Can't you tow me to Las Vegas? Even the tow truck driver doesn't want to go to Las Vegas. Lincoln. I'm getting a I'm Nicolas Cage vibe from him. Uh. 2008's rubbish Alone in the Dark reboot cast you as a younger, grungier version of the original game's Victorian detective, Edward Carnby, and sets its stall out early with an intro sequence that is completely incomprehensible. What if he doesn't show us the path? What if he tries to screw us? That's He's not got enough. a chin on him, don't he? He'll do exactly what we want. Are you listening, Paddington? There's ways to torture a man that go far beyond the frail limits of flesh and bone. Is this a gritty reboot of Paddington Bear? Oh, that's what I was about to say. Like, what, what about fur and going fluff? on is made <laughs> even more difficult by the fact that you have to manually blink every few seconds. Not just during the initial cutscene, but during the entire first-person escape sequence that follows as commenter Petterol recalls. What about the reboot of Alone in the Dark, where you had to manually blink using a dedicated button in order to see properly? Edward begins the game apparently recovering from an exorcism, according to the wiki I just read to try and make sense of all this. That must be the explanation for why he's also suffering the worst case of demonic dry eye we've ever seen. Either that or he just fell asleep with his contact in. Whereas in Manual Samuel, manually controlling automatic bodily functions is the point of the game, this is an otherwise normal survival horror game that has added blinking for a dash of extra immersion. So you spend the start of the game staggering around a collapsing building, menaced by supernatural horrors, with hero Edward frantically blinking like he just rubbed his eyes after chopping some chilli peppers. Hang on, maybe Edward's trying to communicate with us. Blink twice if you'd rather be starring in a better game. Let's hope so. <laughs> Edward. Who said you could talk? Damn. Up to now, I've been going easy. There it is. Thank you so much for watching this list of times that video game realism was, like Gary Boosie, just too real. I uh, hope you enjoyed all those entries, and if you didn't like Gary Boosie particularly, is not real time, enough. There were all suggestions from the commenters, so I had to clean. He is a reality well, in yeah, and of himself. Just get in the comments and tell the people, <laughs> the original <laughs> commenters, what? And that's a loophole there, legal loophole that's, uh, anyway, yes, yeah, sorry. Videos, here's a good one. Uh, it's if you've played Red Dead Redemption 2 and you finished it and you want to talk about the story, come here and join me and Luke in talking about those key story moments. Spoilers. It's big spoiler. Spoilers. Don't click on it if you haven't finished it, but if you have, do. You'll enjoy the story discussion. And down here is a video from Outside Extra, which is about what happens when you go back to an old save and it's very confusing. Definitely recommend that one. Mm -hmm. Just about any RPG, if you, um, if you go back and play it after not playing it for a very long time, you are extremely lost. That's one of the hard things about being an RPG fan. Uh, the older games, especially, they they weren't very helpful when it came to helping you on your journey after you've already got the information on where you need to go. Like nowadays, they have objectives that you can like click on and. If you forget, then you can just like go to the pause menu or bring up your normal menu and it'll usually tell you an objective. Back then, like you had to talk to the NPC that gave you the objective or the clue or something like that. Then you just had to go. If you were out of that town and you saved the game or something and you left for a long time, you came back, you don't remember who the NPC was. You don't remember what the last thing you did was. You just got to hope that you can remember based on where you're at, like the location you're at. You can kind of like assume where you're at in the story. You know, that's how all RPG fans were at the time. Um, I, I thought they would put uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas in here because I remember on that game you had to, man well, not manually, but you had to eat at a realistic pace. Um, also, the original driver, I remember they had like really strict driving laws. <laughs> so you had to like follow the laws and. Um, when it comes to speeding and things like that. So there are a lot of games out there that have things that you that make it seem very realistic. And sometimes it can take the fun away from the game. Um, other times it tends to be the novelty that actually adds charm to the game. So it depends. If you do it right, it could be a good thing. But too much of it, too much of any good thing is a bad thing, like anybody would tell you. But uh, anyway, that's been this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, 
If you want to go and check out Outside Xbox's channel, go ahead and click on the link at the end of this video. The last 30 seconds will take you to their channel. And if you want to watch this without me talking over it or pausing it or anything like that, check out the link in the description box down below. Um, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. And be sure to leave some comments because I love a giant comment section. Maybe you can say I'm overcompensating for something, but I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, that's been this video. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the deuces. I'm Devon Da Vinci, and you've just been a little bit more enlightened. And until then, deuces.